Techbox has just released a new version of their EMC View software, in which they enabled both average and peak scanning simultaneously. In this video, we're going to explore the new features together with some other more advanced features of EMC View software. We're using a conducted emission setup for automotive to demonstrate the EMC View software. Here are the lizards uh, connected to the uh, spectrum analyzer within an EMC tent. Outside the tent, we have spectrum analyzer connected uh, via the USB link to the laptop. The spectrum analyzer we're using for this demonstration is from Sigland. To protect the spectrum analyzer, we have a high pass filter connected. The EMC View software we're using is one of the newest version, which you can download directly from TechBox website. So this is the version we're using. Double click, software is loaded. And then go to device, SAUSB, search. On this item one, click and then connect DSA. Then you should be able to see here that is connected successfully, licensed uh, to the uh, right spectrum analyzer. Okay, so that's the first step to locate the uh, spectrum analyzer. Most of the basic functions or features of EMC View software can be found in another video talk we had, uh, which you can find on our uh, YouTube channel. So this, in this session, we're going to explore the more advanced features of the software. But the first thing I, I noticed is that now, finally, that the software is able to do two scans at the same time. The old version, if you if you ever used the software, you will realize that you need to uh, connect set one to do your average scan, and perhaps then connect set two to do your peak scan. Whereas now you can do them in in the same time. So let's just look at these features. So to enable this feature, you need to go to uh, setup, and then go to options. On the op options. Uh, box, you need to enable this function right here. Enable simultaneous measurement of two traces. I think currently it supports most of the Siglent models. Um, not sure if it supports Rigo um, and uh, perhaps uh, some other models from other manufacturers as well. Okay, so making sure that this function is enabled and then apply. Okay, then exit. Then we need to load some project file as usual. So fire load project. So this is a, an automotive product on the test and is tested against a CISPA 25 class five voltage limit. Therefore we load class five voltage project. We load it. Okay, so now it's successfully loaded the project. As you can see now, um, the red line indicates the average limit whereas the blue line indicates the peak uh, limit. Notice there's a, a light blue color here, shows you the quasi-peak limit, okay? And here, let's look at the left of the software. You can define your start frequency, stop frequency um, display. Again, same applies with the high dB microvolts and low dB microvolts. Again, limit line you can select. So by default, as we explained, um, this has average and quasi-peak limit. And, uh, and, and you can define margin. For example, if we want, um, say, 3 dB margin typically to pass, then we have the margin line showing here. Okay, so that's the margin line here. So put 3 dB, 3 dB. Cable correction, so normally I just left it as it is. Listen, in this case, we're using a tech box uh, listen, uh, but not this type. So let's just uh, select the right type, TBOH. Yeah. And then uh, here you have, uh, I think this is amplifier correction. Yes, so this is the amplifier correction, which is important because I need to select minus 10 dB attenuator. Why is that the case? Because as you can see from the test setup, in order to protect the uh, RF front uh, 
switch of a spectrum analyzer, these days I often tend to put a high pass filter as shown in the test setup. In this case, the high pass filter has about 10 dB attenuation. So to compensate this 10 dB, I need to compensate in the software, which you will see when we start scanning. And then that one is antenna factor, which we don't need for this test. And uh, so segment uh, set one and segment set two really defines the, the scanning, uh, the scanning of the, of the, uh, uh, and then segment set one and set two really defines the scanning. So for example, segment one, for set one, we define using average scanning, and then set two, we use peak scanning. So, um, so yeah, so that's just quite straightforward. And I would uh, leave this bit here untouched uh, because uh, I believe if you change this, sometimes you've got some result which is not representative. So just leave this this area unchanged uh, by default. Okay. So once this is set up, uh, let's see uh, if we can. Um, manage to do the uh, simultaneous uh, scanning. So click start. Once the scanning starts, we now have two traces the uh, showing on the display of the spectrum analyzer. The top trace showing in pink is the peak uh, display and the yellow trace shows the average scanning uh, of the emissions. If we now look at the software uh, display, we can now also see these two traces showing on the on the display uh, in uh, pink and green. So, as we can see here, our first segment's results showed in the display. As you can see now, we, we definitely got the uh, results uh, simultaneously. So, the green trace is the average result, and the uh, pink trace is the peak scanning results. So if I enable raw, raw data 1 and raw data 2, you can see those two traces in, in very light color are the raw data of uh, trace 1 and trace 2. You can see there is about 10 dB difference between the raw data and uh, the final result. That is due to the fact that we have this 10 dB attenuator setup file. As we had explained, this 10 dB attenuator file compensates the fact that we have a high pass filter as the front end of the spectrum analyzer. The reason of having that uh, high pass filter is to protect the RF switch of the spectrum analyzer. It's, this is especially useful if you have no idea what is the emission profile of your EUT. So it's always on the safe side to, to pr put some protection on the spectrum analyzer side, um, but of course, when doing so, making sure that you put in the right compensation file in the uh, software. So, if you go to uh, the uh, directory of the software, you will find a folder where you can easily uh, edit the attenuator file showing here. Actually, we're going to show you that. So, if I go to um, my computer here, and you can see here we have EMC View software. Double click. You can see here we have source folder. Okay, so it's on the source, I believe. And then you have COMP, which means compensation file folder. And then here you can put amplifier, antennas, current probes, listen, and others. Okay, so in this case we go to amplifier. As you can see, I have 3 dB, 6 dB, 9 dB, 10, 20, 30 dB. But in case you have some odd uh, number, for example, you put a uh, high pass filter and then again you put a uh, uh, 6 dB attenuator. So then you, and you ended up with 16 dB attenuator. But it's very easy to, to edit. So double click. So you copy that, double click, and then you can simply change this value to minus 16 and minus 16 and then close it. Then, uh, then in the software, you can just load that 16 dB attenuator file. Uh, uh, if you wish, okay. So that's that's just easy. As we just uh, spoke, there are more results coming through. So again, I get rid of the raw data and raw data, right? So so far, the results is quite uh, promising. Both 
average and peak scanning results are well under the limits and also under the, the margin limit we defined, okay? But as, as we scan further into higher frequency, as you can see now, um, there are noise uh, rising up. So let's just uh, see what happens in the, in a higher frequency range. As we approach 20 to 30 megahertz, as you can see, we have a resonance peak showing in the, in the results now. And I believe here we exceed some limits because I can already see some, some points here. And also showing in the peak set one, you can see there are many points highlighted which the either exceeded the margin point or exceeds the, uh, the limit line, right? Because in this case, we define a margin, so it will show all the points uh, which exceeds the margin limit we defined, okay? So in order to see that clearly, what I'm going to do is to disable uh, the, um, the peak line so we can see more clearly, okay? So the scanning now is, is complete and we see that um, in this region, we definitely exceed the limit line. Here is close to the margin line and here is it, we have definitely multiple points which exceed the, the margin limit line. And all these points are listed in this peak set one, that is 14 points, okay? So we have 14 points which uh, exceeds the limit. So the EUT in this case uh, has a switch mode power supply which has a very fast switch which contributes to uh, noise uh, all over the place, let us say. And as you can see from the setup, we showed you earlier on that we had a coid cable and that coid cable basically decides where the resonance peak occur. And in this case, it's just unfortunate that the resonance peak occur at a frequency range which we are actually interested in and exceeds the CISPA 25 classified limits. Another function which I found extremely useful is the uh, quasi-peak detection, right, which I will show you here. So if we zoomed in again in this uh, frequency range, and we can see that the average result exceeding the limit, whereas the peak result actually below the limit. Although peak uh, result touching the quasi-peak line, which is showing in this uh, light blue. So we need to make sure that uh, the quasi-peak results actually uh, are below this limit line, because the standard says the quasi-peak result should be below the quasi-peak limit. Okay, so what, what do we do then? So if I uh, go to set one and then uh, display peaks again, so we have uh, again all these peaks uh, selected uh, uh, here, and I will just pick up a, a, a value here, okay? Yeah, 26.47, which is this one. So I pick this point and I do right click, and here you can see I have two options here. I can do measure consider drift and measure ignore drift. So in this case, we'll do measure consider drift, and I'll explain why I select this. So if I click this option now, and you can see here the software starts scanning again. And if you look at the, uh, the software, uh, and if you look at the spectrum analyzer in this case, the uh, spectrum analyzer is using a quasi-peak uh, detector now. And what it does is it's doing a few points right uh, next to the uh, point we select i believe is three points on the left and three points on the right and what it does is it does this um, the quasi peak scanning and then giving you the quasi peak value in the end and the reason we need this quasi peak scanning considering drift is because for applications such as switch mode power supply as you warm up the switch mode power supply, it could have some drift, right? So that means the peak you show uh, at one scanning might be slightly different with the other scanning you did perhaps uh, 10 minutes later. So we need to take the drift into consideration and do a proper quasi-peak scan in that defined, um, in that defined uh, frequency range. So now, as we just uh, explained, the results uh, showed in here. So uh, point four, 
Pulsing Peak Detection. At 26.47 MHz, we have 30.77 dB microvolts. Okay, so if I zoom in here, you can see the cross in pink color is the quasi peak result. It is, you know, below the limits, uh, below its peak results, which we know, and is higher, slightly higher than the average result, which makes sense. Okay, so that's the quasi peak scanning around this point. Right, we did I think six scanning quasi peak scanning, and gives us uh, the maximum point, which shows here. Okay, so as I, as I explained. Sometimes the uh, as as your unit warms up, this point might slightly shift to the left or right, but it will. Uh, so this algorithm actually captures this drift and gives you the results. Very very useful in my opinion.